So behavioral systems analysis, I've yet to create something on the topic. Can you tell us what it is maybe as a starting point? Yeah, so really what it is is an analytical process that allows the behavior analyst to understand the environmental variables that are affecting behavior or um, maybe uh, promoting or prohibiting behavior uh, from occurring and guides the behavior analyst through a process of specifying performance objectives, designing and implementing an intervention, and then engaging in an analytical process of understanding the, the effects of the intervention on behavior and then undergoing the necessary revisions to change behavior to continue to support uh, employee behavior for you know, the short and long term. So essentially it's taking the same analytical approach we might use with our clients and using that with our with our staff and and uh, staying true to those core values of um, a sort of a thoroughgoing view and approach of applied behavior analysis. Yeah, I've always viewed this as like there's the individual level and understanding how a contingency, like a single contingency operates, but behavioral systems analysis is like the realization slash action and um, of trying to map out, understand how all of these compound and affect each other. Is that is that safe to, to assume? Yeah, you can certainly think about it that way. And, and, you know, it's about taking the pieces of the organizational environment, so to speak, and making sense of them and understanding how they they may promote behavior or like prohibit it or, or um, make it less likely for behavior to occur. And just rearranging things, modifying things. And I mean, it's, it's, um, it's not as simple as that. Obviously, it takes thought and care to, uh, to be able to do it well, but just you know, just as we would do for our, any client that we might have when we're arranging the environment, manipulating things to be able to support behavior, we're looking at it at the organizational level. Um, so we can, um, you know, make sure our employees are engaging in behaviors that are ideal, optimal, and, and more efficient. And it's all about improving the quality of care that is, that is provided. Uh, where's behavioral systems analysis been, um, utilized leverage is this like we're talking just in a behavioral organization that provides ABA services or is this much larger this is much much larger and, and you know the 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 utility of this is, is is sort of endless um but you know you think about areas of behavioral safety or just improving productivity in the workplace it could certainly be used in schools and centers but it's not at all um confined to that and, and i even think about it too uh, in our home systems and uh, interventions I might use with my kids or, or support maybe myself and, and um, uh, maybe sort of self-management types of interventions, behavioral systems analysis can uh, certainly be applicable and, and you know useful and highly effective in those situations as well. That's cool. Now, uh, if I can pivot a little bit, you are also uh, one of the, I think the few that write very well and prolifically nowadays about ethics and, and ethical sort of topics. Um, this applies, yes? Yes, yeah, certainly. So for the upcoming Stone Soup Conference, we're certainly going to be taking this behavioral systems approach and, and spinning it uh, in the area of ethics and behavior analysis, because really you've seen, I think our, our field has really done a good job of, of describing behavioral systems with interventions and maybe uh, how we might treat challenging behavior, for example, but it hasn't done a good job of describing how we might do that to improve ethical behavior. And so part of my push is to just, you know, use the same analytical process, maintain the, the core values and commitments to operationally defining behavior, designing high quality interventions, using high quality measurement systems and evaluative processes and, and revision processes, taking that and applying that to the area of ethics um, because it's human behavior, just um, it's all these other areas that we've worked in are interested in and in, in the, um, uh, the tune of applied behavior analysis can certainly be sung in those areas. Uh, do you have a go-to resource or other places you want to point people to when it comes to behavioral systems analysis? So you mentioned you're talking about this in the context of ethics at that one conference. People can check that out. We'll have the link for it. Um, but where else? Like, how do you get training in behavioral systems analysis? Where do you learn more? Sure. So, you know, I've published a workbook called The Workbook in, in Behavioral Systems Analysis and Ethical Behavior that details how you can go through this analytical process in, in the area of ethics and behavior analysis. But, you know, also as a um, undergrad and, and master's student, 
really the work that inspired me in this area was uh, Dr. Dr. Maria Malad, also Dr. Heather McGee, have both really been inspirational and have done some incredible work that I really see as like foundational to a lot of the stuff that I've um, written and talked about in that area. I'm Matt Broadhead. I am an associate professor at Michigan State University, and I study focused social skill interventions, choice and decision making in people with autism, and then also ethical and professional issues in the practice of behavior analysis. Hey, this is part of a speaker series for an upcoming conference called Stone Soup. You can learn more down below. Uh, they didn't pay me for any of this sort of stuff, but if you do register, it does help support my channel in a small way with a kickback. Thank you for considering. There's continuing education and such, and I'll see you in the next one. That's your Daily BA.